You know, the scriptural record that we have in all the earliest creeds of the Christian faith teach us that Jesus of Nazareth died a little over 2,000 years ago. That he went to the cross and he sacrificed himself for you, for me, for all humanity. And through Jesus, all of humanity's sins might be forgiven all through what he has done. But even beyond that, even beyond his death upon the cross, the earliest creeds and scriptural record and the earliest traditions of the church tell us that Jesus Christ not only died, but he rose from the dead. That he came forth out of the grave for you and for me, for each and every one of us. And that tells us that we are not worshiping or following a dead founder of a religion, but we are in an ongoing relationship and participation with a living Savior. One that is with us each and every day. One that is right here in the midst of our lives, your lives, whatever you face today, tomorrow. He has been with the people of God for the last 2,000 years. That he didn't stay in the grave and it was his humanity that was resurrected, glorified and brought forth from the grave for you and for me. For each and every one of us, for all who will just but believe, all those who will accept the grace of God. For each and every one of us. In Romans. Romans the epistle of the Romans. That Paul has written. And understand remember that almost all of the epistles were written before the gospels. With the exception of maybe Mark. So most of the epistles that we read were already being circulated around the Middle East. Being transmitted from church to church. Before any of the gospel messages were being read in Matthew, Luke, Luke. And in John. So John writing to the early church. But he's writing to you and to me and Christians throughout the ages. In Romans 1. Romans 1 breaking into the third chapter. Says concerning his son. That is Jesus Christ. Who was a descendant of David according to the flesh. And he was declared to be the son of God. In power through the resurrection of the dead. That is that Jesus Christ is not the Son of God because he was raised from the dead. But rather he was raised from the dead because he is the Son of God. He isn't the Son of God because he was raised from the dead. But he was raised because he is the Son of the living God. You see the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus confirms the deity of Christ. And remember, without the resurrection, without the resurrection of Jesus, the cross would be absolutely meaningless. The resurrection verifies the incarnation and demonstrates the power of the cross to bring new life to you and to me. He is the only one through whom and by whom humanity can be reconciled. Brought back into union with himself. That is a right relationship. And it was through Jesus Christ coming in the flesh. The very son of God. The eternal son of God. Taking on the humanity that each and every one of us has. Living. Going to the cross. Dying and being buried and then being raised. That we can have an all new life. You see the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the pivotal moment in all of human history. In all the history of salvation. For without the resurrection. Without the resurrection. Jesus would simply have been another martyr. The founder of another re religion. A prophet. A rabbi. But the resurrection demonstrates that he is much more than that. That he is God in the flesh. He has done for each and every one of us. What none of us could have accomplished for ourselves. He accomplished our salvation for you, for me, for every one of us. If we will just but accept it. He has done that for all of us. He has done for us what we could never have accomplished. Not through any self-help, willpower, adherence to code of ethics or morals. He has done for us what we could not do for ourselves. In Acts, Acts the second, second chapter, beginning in verse 31, we read, For he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that is David. For he saw and he spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are witnesses. 
being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this Spirit upon ourself, and has demonstrated it in your seeing and your hearing. You see, the resurrection of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus was one of the pivotal moments in all of history. And it was the focal point of the presentation of the gospel. They were witnesses that Jesus lives. Not that he had lived, but he lives. The early church traveled across the face of the Roman Empire, telling others about a living Savior, one who is there for each and every one of us. In 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, the 14th chapter, Paul writing to the church, he says, For the love of Christ compels us. The love of Christ compels us. That is, it was the love that God had for us that motivated the early church. You see, that's what motivated the early church to travel throughout the Roman Empire and the ancient world telling people about Jesus, sharing Christ with others. It was God's love for them that motivated them. It wasn't their love for God, but rather God's love for them. That they were impelled. They were compelled. They were motivated to tell others about the love that God has for each and every one of us. For all humanity. It says, for the love of God compels us. The love of Christ compels us. For we have concluded. We have concluded. See, the early church had to come to a decision about what has changed in humanity's relationship with God. With the entrance of Jesus Christ into the stream of human history, the early church had to come to grips as to what does this mean? What does it mean that God has come in the flesh in the person of Jesus? What does this mean? The early church had to come to a decision. We have concluded that means that they talked about it, they thought about it, they considered it. They developed a theology about it. They came to an understanding as to what has changed in humanity's relationship with the great God because Jesus has come. We have concluded this, that one died for all. That one died died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sakes died and was raised. That is, in Jesus all of us have died, and in Jesus all of us have raised. That there's a new life for all of us, because Jesus came forth from the grave. If Jesus was not resurrected, if Jesus was not resurrected, there would be no new life for any of us. There would be no hope of eternal life. There would be no hope of our lives ever being any different than they were the day before we heard the message of the gospel. But because Jesus has been raised, because our old self has died in him, our old natures, who we were and our ignorance of who Christ is, and what he has accomplished for all of us, because he has raised, we are raised now in him, through him and by him for our all new life. To have a whole new orientation, a whole new relationship with the great God. To be able to relate to one another in peaceful ways. To have a unity and a closeness. All because he raised from the dead. Jesus is the hope of all humanity, through whom and by whom he has reconciled each and every one of us, the entire race of man, back to himself through Christ. Again, this is not something that we could have done. You and I could never have accomplished this. Our best efforts would be 